First, let's go over the three general rules when modifying your Grand Theft Auto V game. The first rule, don't journey alone. What we mean by this, ensure you plug into the rich community of LSPDFR players for support, useful information, and an upleveling of your skill set. This will be very important if you have further questions and want to be inspired by the work and creations of others. Let's pause the video here. Please take this moment to subscribe to the recommended resources listed below. Please resume the video once you have done so. Okay, welcome back. The second rule, go slow. It can be very tempting to download and start installing every plugin, callout pack, new vehicle, exciting sirens, and all the new and greatest features out there. The LSPDFR community is full of great developers. They're putting out content all the time. However, going too fast can lead to mistakes in installation, which could cause game crashes, severe latency, and ultimately lead to frustration with and disinterest in the game entirely. By going slow means you're only installing one plugin, script, or packet at any one time, and this can ensure you know exactly what caused a problem if something does go wrong, if the installation was not properly completed, or if what you installed has errors. Troubleshooting your problem will be much easier when you know that before installing, let's for example, plugin A, your game was working, and afterwards, your game was not working. Moving on to rule number three, always use a mods folder. You won't need a mods folder for what we'll be showing you in this video series. However, as an important general rule, you will want to use a mods folder to install custom uniforms, vehicles, weapons, etc. As part of this rule, you should never modify or edit your original vanilla Grand Theft Auto V game files. Let's review the three general rules one more time. Number one, don't journey alone. Number two, go slow. Number three, use a mods folder. Okay, now that we have the three general rules down, let's move on to step number one in installing LSPDFR. 